Well, welcome back to Crowley House Flower Farm. This week on the farm, things are starting to progress. We have been working really hard to try and get all the gardens cleaned up, mulched, weeded. We're doing that big weed through that most people in spring have to do. I don't know if all climates are like that, but we have this perfect storm for weeds to grow. And so it's a little bit of a challenge to get on top of it. I know some of you asked me last video how I keep on top of my weeds. And a lot of times what I do is I zone it out into sections. I have my kind of cool garden that we looked at last week, and then it moves on to a section that's up by the house. And then it moves into a section that is back by the like regular vegetable garden, all the raised beds. And then it moves back even further, which that's the new zone that we're going to be putting in. And then it kind of moves around to the greenhouse and then out to the peonies and roses. And so every single week this time or every single day this time of year, we go through and we do like each section and sometimes we fall behind. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for you. There are times that it's just like, hmm, that didn't happen and it gets out of control. So um, we don't use very much um, kind of like a weed killer or anything like that, only if we have like blackberries or something that's really vigorous that we have to get on top of. That's very sparingly, maybe once a year um, will we have to get on top of that uh, right away kind of thing. Um, and again, if I'm using something like that, then full suit, take a shower right afterwards, make sure there's no wind, keep it really close to the ground. Uh, but we really, really try not to do that. So we try and grow as naturally as possible. But there is this little bit of a blackberry issue in some parts and it's more of the outskirts of the farm. So other than that, um, it's just muscle power and we get in there with our tools and it's just catching the weeds right on time, right? So it is hard to do and we do let some areas get away from us and then one one year one little garden will be great and the next one's not so great and you know but then the next year it kind of rotates around anyways i was just going to kind of show you guys this week a little bit about what's happening what flowers are coming on you know it's spring here so the tulips have just started to really do their flush uh they have been going for a little bit so we're about ready to take all of them out and then we have the little garden is doing amazing riley i'm so proud of her she's doing a really good job with her garden so I'm gonna have her show you that and I'll just take you for a quick tour through the greenhouse and show you the progression of our snapdragons are off the hook we're gonna be taking out the anemones putting in some lisianthus and so I'll have Emma show you that and I think uh, we have some just projects that we're working on uh, Riley is going to give you a quick look at what we did this last weekend which was a wedding showcase which we were we're new to we don't normally do those things but we th were asked and so we did this wedding showcase she did an amazing job she did an installation along with a big floral arrangement and then we also did a little bit of an installation and floral piece for a coordinator a wedding coordinator company and so she did both those and she's just going to talk about what she used from the farm and what she bought in uh, for these beautiful designs. Oh my gosh, you guys, they are absolutely stunning. She does such a good job with like the colors. That's what we have for you this week. Enjoy the video and we'll see you at the end. Come with me. I'm gonna show you guys through the greenhouse a little bit. Can't believe that it's time to be switching things out already. I'm gonna start with row one. We have a huge patch of scented geranium. It needs to be filled in. We have some really cool varieties, which I think we showed in the last video. And then we have our anemones here, which have done so well for us. They're beautiful, but it's probably time to make some room for Lysianthus. Probably sometime this week, we're gonna rip this out and put our Lysianthus in. And as you guys might know, we are very desperate for some space for our Lysianthus. So this will do really well. 
Um, next row over, really excited. These Snapdragons are starting to show color. So they will be here just in time for Mother's Day, which is perfect. We planned it out perfectly and we're really excited about these. And then we have a beautiful row of ranunculus and they are also kind of coming to an end. I think probably next week we will be taking them out as well and putting in another row of lisianthus. I mean, I don't really need to brag about sweet peas, but they're doing fabulous as well. <laughs> you can see that a few of them are kind of starting to bloom. I think every week it grows like over a foot. Like I think it's been like two feet that it's grown this last week, especially with the sun that we had. It had a huge boost. And every time that I trellis them up, I fertilize them with a little bit of fish fertilizer, which also gives them a big boost every single week. Let's go to the other side of the greenhouse. These two rows are second succession planting of Ranunculus and, and then, um, not anemones, snapdragons. And these are just now starting to bloom. They're looking really good. We're gonna cut through them. We have a big event this week. And um, honestly, they're kind of like a cut and come again. They keep flowering for you the more you cut on them. So that'll be really good for them. We still need to trellis these snapdragons really bad. So this that's something that we're gonna do this week. These are our mother plants for our mums. And we really, really need to get these propagated and get our enough trays for a row or two. Um, I think this year we're gonna try to do some mums outside as well, which is gonna be a really fun tester. And I'm really excited for that. But that is the goal for this week. So lots of things to do. Our hanging basket experiment is coming along nicely. Some of the combos that we made are so pretty. I especially really love these ones. Kind of has that periwinkle, peachy color and then some raspberry tones in there and I'm really excited for this combo. Um, we're hoping that they get pretty big by Mother's Day, but you know, we're not putting pressure on Mother Nature. We'll see what she does. <laughs> um, but we are gonna be selling these throughout early um, summer and late spring and I'm excited for them. So this last weekend on Saturday, we had the privilege of getting to be a part of the wine country weddings showcase out in Dundee and we had a blast we got to meet a lot of cool other vendors that work in the in the wedding industry in this area this was our first time at one of these events so it was definitely a new experience for us it was a lot of fun uh, we met a lot of new vendors we saw a lot of old friends uh, there and we all got to like you know work together it's a great opportunity for businesses to um, kind of collaborate on things and talk about like how we can help each other uh, in the industry. These are a couple days old since we did it on Saturday. Today is Tuesday. So they've been just hanging out in the house and just opening. But I thought I would show you like what I put in them and what the vibe was behind each of these arrangements. This one here and then the pastels and the yellows and with deeper tones was for our booth. I really wanted to show something that represented Crowley House and kind of the designs that we would prefer to do or kind of like what we really enjoy and can put out. And a lot of these flowers are from our farm um, or from other farmers locally. Yeah, I wanted the color palette to be soft but fun and the arrangement to be classic but with like modern twists in it, like having the clumping. Um, I've been really into color clumping lately. So I had, I popped in these like darker tulips that stuck to one side. So I have some of our lovely anemones in here. Black tulips, queen of the night is the variety. Butterfly ranunculus, this is the pinky peach color. I'm not sure of the variety. These roses here are called combo, I believe. And they're like, almost like a honey Dijon. Um, they open up beautifully. I have some gorgeous lilac -y lavender stock in here. Blue plurum. It's very lily paddy. I have some white sweet peas. 
they smell amazing this is like a light like a lavender um delphinium i have some german status in here oh i have some gorgeous these are some ranunculus that are insane some of the prettiest ranunculuses i've ever seen oh and i have some of these really nice peachy colored tulips that are just so yummy <sighs> and then this one is also very romantic slightly more structured um, and very different color palette this I we made for another vendor so this was made for our friends at YPB and they were another vendor there at the event and they asked us to do an arrangement for them and some other little installs this again is a couple days old this one's a little wilty but she is so pretty and they sent us some photos of like the peaches and yellows that they were wanting and I decided to add a little bit of dark burgundy just a touch because there is a touch of dark burgundy in these gorgeous flowers they're a type of fertilia but they have some dark burgundy at the tips of them here we have some of this deep burgundy heuchera growing here on the farm and they had photos of not the deep burgundy one they had the like limey gold one in it but i was like you know what i'm gonna take a little creativity and since i have it i want to use it um we also have some peach tulips which are definitely at the end <laughs> and these gorgeous gorgeous i believe these are a type of david austin rose i actually don't know the right name of them i think it might be a juliet i'm not a hundred percent positive they are seriously showing off though they are gorgeous i have some of the butter yellow stock in here and we have some uh this is hellebore this is our yellow one this i don't know what the name of it is but it is such a pretty like velvety texture and then i have some of these frilly this is um clematis vine and these are the little like flower middles of the clematis oh and then i have some of this really fun seeded eucalyptus it kind of looks like gold dripping so I think we're gonna show you a sneak peek of what we did at the thing. I think, I don't know if it's in videos or photo form, but you're gonna see what we did. <laughs> wise I have zones and it helps when you can kind of in your brain take your garden and piece it out into chunks and then be able to uh, just go ahead and and take each day do one thing in that garden whether that's weed or just weeding as much as you can and then moving on to the next it's kind of like housekeeping when you like have your laundry and sweeping the floor you kind of have your routine that you do that's kind of how i visualize the gardens even though we're growing on a mass scale um this works for us so zone one is technically what i call the personal gardens um, behind me is the cool garden i was going to show you this beautiful lilac that is starting in lilacs are so fun they are one of those flowers that you have when you cut it you want to strip off all except for just maybe a few leaves at the top and that will make it hold really really well for you so back to my weeding projects or maintenance of my different gardens so the cool garden is one of my personal gardens and then i have so i have little gardens spotted around this is a fully shade garden it's right next to where the hose is uh, but I maintain this guy really uh, simple. It's got a lot of fern, evergreens, really, really fun garden. So then I have this like little circle-y garden that's up by the house. So this garden I work on from time to time and it's one of those gardens that is evolving as we go. It's really, really uh, just been kind of leave it alone. It doesn't get too many weeds, partly because we have these beautiful ponderosas 
up here and they drop a lot of pine needle and that self mulch mulches so you can tell there's hardly any weeds so i can get in here and just do my thing really really quickly sometimes that's on an evening when i have nothing else to do <laughs> so you can tell we've got all these himalayan blackberries just pocket popping up here and there. We'll just hand dig those out in gardens like this. But Spanish bluebells, they kind of border along these rock area. This is a new little area that I'm going to redo. So we had a little pathway that ran through here that went up to the house. And it just gets enough shade that the lavender doesn't like it so well and it just bends over and it kind of falls in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually add some soil to this area and plant it up. So this is gonna become no longer a walk path. But this is all included in the zone one of weeding. So zone one also includes just the area by the house. We just do, there's a couple little beds. We don't do too much here. It's pretty easy to stay on top of because we do focus a lot of time on this. And sometimes on the weekends I get out here and do a little bit of work, but it's coming along. So moving fast because this video is gonna go way too long and I'm not giving a full tour. So zone two starts back there and it runs all the way along here. Zone two starts here, kind of back at the hedgerow. There's a road right there and it moves along, stopping for a moment because this is beautiful. Columbine is just starting in, absolutely fantastic. Uh, and then it goes all the way back to that tree line. So that's a pretty big zone. That takes us a while. Sometimes it takes us more than a day. Then we're gonna move back to where the gardens are. So we're starting to trellis up all of our hops here. They're looking good. We already weeded that and got some new mulch down, but they are climbing, you guys, beautifully just up the little strings that we've got here we weren't able to move them this year we wanted to but alas it has not happened so we'll do that in the fall but beautiful little tendrils climbing they look super healthy this year okay onto the little garden so this is zone three technically sometimes we break these up into bigger zones but Everybody kind of knows this is zone three and this kind of goes off of our watering schedule. So Riley's done a really good job. I'm gonna give you a quick, quick little tour of the garden here. So we have some parsnips that are coming up in both areas, some beautiful lettuces. So we have a Waldman's green here and then a butter crunch lettuce there. So a couple of lettuces looking really, really good. A little bit more parsnip. And then we have some collard greens going in here. We have some celery, and then um, she's got some broccoli, I believe. And super proud of, I have this netting over because we still have the ducks out. She's got some really fun radishes that are making their way up. They're like a French radish type style. We have a patch of garlic. We've got a couple different ones here. A Sicilian, several rolls of Sicilian and Chilium red garlic, it looks like, that she planted. I love that little color down there, you guys. Look at that. Isn't that fun? It's just kind of a, you can tell what color it is by sometimes looking at the stock. So Sicilian there. And then I think, oh, we've got these onions that are going to seed, these overwintered. We'll take those out, but we like the seed heads to use for designing. And then there's a big patch, which this needs weeded for sure. This was my last project, you can tell. Um, I was getting in here and trying to do something with, this is an asparagus bed. This is the first year we've really had some nice spears coming up. This is year two for them. So we're not cutting them this year. We're letting them kind of go. We'll see how they do. I want this whole bed to fill in. It takes years to do that. They are doing good. Part of that is, um, it's just kind of unsightly. So what a lot of times what we'll do is just the area in zone um, two, we try to limit the amount of landscape fabric. Plus we have a lot of folks that come out to the farm and they walk and they cut flowers and they do different things like that. And if they're walking on landscape fabric or hoses or drip or anything like that, it kind of creates a little bit of a hazard, trip hazard for folks. So I like to just have more of a natural garden up by the house and yeah, it's just a little bit less, um, I, I, I don't know. I just, I like the more natural feel and look 
of just no landscape fabric. Okay, on to zone three. I had to think about it for a second. <laughs> like, what zone am I in? There's so many zones. I don't know what to do. Okay. The greenhouse is zone four. So the greenhouse we do almost on a daily basis, but we kind of follow the watering patterns. Zone five is out here. This is the new area. We haven't had to do too much with that yet. This is all going to be planted up this year. And then way out there is zone six. That one's done a little bit more with just keeping on top of the weeds with the rototiller. Thankfully, we have a friend of ours that has do a little bit of light tilling back with the roses and the peonies because it's such a big area. And then, so just kind of cultivate the ground. And then we use a lot of this uh, bark dust that we have a mill up the road that gives us bark dust. And so they just drop it off for free. We use it in the walk paths and it works really, really well for us. So that's our weeding schedule and zones. So I think for you, just if you're struggling at your place with just staying on top of weeds, go ahead and figure out a zone. Maybe it's only three or two zones, but just chunk it into sizes that work well for you. So every spring I have the job of kind of keeping control of the weeds. And that's not easy for us um, here on the farm. It's a big farm and there's a lot to control. <laughs> um, even in a yard, there's just a lot to control. So I just wanted to talk through some of the ways that we do control weeds, because it's not like there's one simple way. I went to the hardware store the other day and there was just a plethora of weed killers. And there was your traditional, like what everybody knows as the Roundup and um, Roundup, Crossbow, and then they had all these organic, this big organic session, which is really great. Because a lot of times you just don't find, you can find maybe one bottle of organic. So I did search online to see if I could find for people that don't have this amazing, we have this like, it's called called the Grange, um, or the Mill, sorry. It's called the Mill um, Garden Center. And it's kind of like a, just it has a lot of um, animal feeds and like weed killers. And that's where we get all of our fertilizers and that kind of thing for the farm. And it's just kind of a mom and pop kind of store, but it also has this availability to bigger farms. So it's really cool. And it's just down the road in, in our town. And so when I was looking at all their weed killers, I was like, holy cow, there's a lot. So I think using something like that, if you're going to use something, uh, give it a try because I think a lot of people just in their heads and even me at when I was you know new it's like what do you use for killing weeds oh roundup that's what you use that's what everybody uses right um, but to search out different ways and not until I was older did I realize okay what does roundup do versus what does the organics do and really understanding those things really was helpful. So just do some research, I guess, when you're doing something like a weed killer. So one of the recipes that we use at times or when I first started learning how to do this natural weed killer was to do the simple trick of the white wine vinegar, Epsom salt, and a little bit of, a little bit of dish soap. My recipe is one gallon of white wine vinegar and then add to that and, and, and then vinegar can be 5% um, just kind of the household white wine vinegar that you use for canning um, or fermenting foods um, then you're gonna want to use one cup of salt and I like to use an Epsom salt and then you're gonna add about a tablespoon of dish soap something like um, whatever you have in the kitchen but um, they you know if you look it up it says like use something like Dawn dish soap which Dawn dish soap is a great um, bug killer if you have like aphids and that kind of thing you can just put it into a sprayer with some water and uh, spray it on and it works really good too so um, anyways the vinegar it stinks that's the negative of it and it kind of like um, it kind of burns the plant it kind of like the soap kind of lets it kind of adhere to it and then it takes some time to get down into the roots and it does a really good job I mean it's inexpensive that's the cool part because a lot of these uh, weed killers can be super expensive so if you're on a budget you know and you've got a small area 
or even a big area, um, try it and see because I think it really will help. The key to using any of these is to catch the weeds right as they're emerging, as the baby shoots are coming up. So to kind of have that routine built into your garden or your farm is every week, you know, you fertilize, we have a fertilize Fridays and then weed Wednesdays, you know, and that would be to spray. I think the most effective way is just for us to be hand pulling the weeds. So we do have a team that comes out um, usually once or twice in the spring and once or twice in the summer and then again in the fall. And that helps us just get on top of things. And the hand weeding is probably the number one thing that I can say that has really helped me stay on top of beautiful gardens and the weeds because people ask me that, how do you, how do you control them? So, but things for like walk paths and um, like the gravel driveway, that's great to use an organic spray or this vinegar spray. So there's a couple um, organic sprays that I like and um, they all use like a clove oil and like a molasses base. They smell a lot better than the vinegar and they work really, really well. So one of them is by Biosafe, um, there's Captain Jack's, there is Burnout, and then I think it's Advantage, Va no, Avenger. I always think of the guy, the Avengers. Um, those are all ones that, you know, I've seen or used or um, have had good success with. So check those out, just read. I think that's the number one thing is just to read and see what works best for you. Um, so I'm gonna take you over and just show you um, some of the landscape fabric. People ask me about why I don't use as much of it and I'll tell you why. So landscape fabric has its place for sure, but I guess in my mind, I'm trying to get away from it just because it's easier to work around plants and if you have any like rodent issues, you don't see them underneath there. And these are some beautiful coral charms. Just look at, you can start seeing that little color coming on. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful alliums, just starting. And then there's some gorgeous, gorgeous columbine. Okay, back to what we're talking about. So landscape fabric. You can see I was weeding here. There's my bucket, I'm going along. So a lot of times if I'm using it, I'll use it in walk paths. I'll lift it every year, flip it over, and that just gets, so you'll see how um, just in rain, there's weeds and debris that kind of settles on it. And uh, they'll start growing little tiny weed seeds. So what we do is we just flip over the, the little walk paths here, clean it up, and then we'll come through and weed through here, and then throw down some sawdust or bark or mulch that's the other key to keeping weeds down. We have like so much fever few coming up. Sometimes I leave things like that. It just looks pretty. So here we have the David Austins and again, weed fabric coming through. And so a lot of times then when we're flipping that over, getting in, getting all the weeds on the sides, uh, we might go ahead and put down a walk path so eventually that's what I'm going to do is just have mulch down and not these weed fabrics. But just to try and keep on top of the weeds, we do use it in places, but it is a little bit unsightly. I feel <laughs> this is an area we already did. Um, we need, we came in and we put just a little compost down to help with the weeds. It's, it's coming along. It just, I guess maybe that's my thing is I, I think it looks ugly. So I think the combination of using both landscape fabric and um, just the ground is keeping me balanced a little bit. Eventually I want to go to just not using any at all just because of the unsightliness of it. When I first started you guys, oh my gosh, I had little ones and I didn't even, I didn't use any landscape fabric. One, I couldn't afford it and two, I just didn't really know about it and then I kind of researched a few things and found like the first year I just 
I remember thinking, how in the heck do people do this? Like, I could not keep up. And again, it's something that you learn to do. Like, I didn't know I had to, like, designate a day or, you know, once a day do something, some sort of weeding. But anyways, um, I learned to use it and it saved my bacon and got me to where I'm at now, to where I do have a team of people that help me and able to get uh, all the weeding done and do it several times a year. It's not like once and done kind of thing. It's, it's a constant work. So here is a combination where we're using landscape fabric for some things and then here we have nothing. This is a no dig area. We actually treat the whole area as a no dig and then we have a large walk path that we can get down. But again, I want this space to look a little bit more like a garden but I also have to have my sanity. The other methods we've used is burning so we've got a torch on the end of a, like a propane tank and we'll go along and burn a lot of times that's things like you know when we're getting into like some really sticky like mucky weeds like really hard weeds and it doesn't work 100 percent and you do have to be careful and we can only do it at certain times of the year because we live in a fire zone area so we you know, come July through October, we're generally shut down from doing any burning and that's the best time to actually do that kind of thing is like, you know, if you're trying to kill off blackberries or anything really invasive, the, the burning actually works pretty well, or at least we've found. So you just have to try all these methods. The other thing with any of these organics or the, any of these organics or the vinegar spray, you have to make sure that it's pretty hot out that uh, the sun is shining directly, that works the best. So if you're doing it on a day like today, it's a little bit foggy out, um, it wouldn't work and the dew is on the ground, so that's gonna dilute it. So again, it's just, you know, picking the right day, having the weeds just at the right, you know, they're not big and vigorous, they're little tiny guys and you can just kind of get in there and, and just buzz across the top of them and you'll find some really good results. If you wait for them to get huge, I'd recommend using like a weed eater, knocking them down. You might have to spray a couple different times and then just do your research because even organic sprays and the vinegar sprays do have an impact on your soil. And so you gotta read through it. I mean, people have used bleach and all kinds of stuff to kill weeds but there is an impact and so just to know and be knowledgeable of what that impact is is key to being successful and just in staying within your moral um thinking and and how you want to run your farm uh, i gotta tell you the number one thing of killing weeds is this by hand <laughs> it's not always fun <laughs> anyways i hope that was a little bit helpful on kind of how we do weeds here on the farm and maybe leave me a comment below of how you found the best way to kill weeds um in your garden or farm i'd love to hear that because you know sharing is knowledge so we all kind of find the things that we absolutely love to use and what works best for us and um anyways i'm just sharing with you today kind of the things we do because people ask me all the time but I'm here in the greenhouse where we do use landscape fabric. This is one area we do, but we turn this over quite a bit. So it's a little bit different um, in that way. But you can see, I'm gonna show you here, I'm weeding a little patch and I thought I would get started early this morning. And um, it's warmer in here actually than it is outside. We've had some really nice days, but it's um, a little chilly this morning. So I'm gonna go through and uh, finish my job that I started last night. Um, and got my million squats in. My legs are a little bit sore today. <laughs> but yeah, right. Or Emma and I, so Emma started on the greenhouse and this is her after getting all of her jobs done when she was talking about the snapdragons and the mums. So she got all the mums started and she got them cut down. We cut them down usually once or twice a year and we'll do it again in July. Not as vigorous as we did this time. We we were relabeling, refiguring out things, and she did that for us.
Well, as always, much success in all you do and grow, and we'll be seeing you shortly back here at Crowley House very soon for another look at beautiful flowers and the gardens. I'm gonna take you through, I think, the front gardens. We're adding in some beautiful color spots and some different things going into the garden. So I thought I would take you along for that. So until next time, bye.